Hi everyone. Um, in this lecture, I'll discuss about the output impedance or the low frequency output impedance of a common collector or an emitter follower configuration. So again, when we analyze output resistance, I'll before we discuss this problem, I'll just discuss a very a small circuit analysis problem. Let's say we had an impedance Z between two terminals and I have a controlled current source which is actually in taking in a current of value whatever the current so let me write it as Vx by Z into beta ok. So, it is it's, it's going to draw a current where beta is a number much greater than 1. So, the car for example, if I apply a voltage Vx across this the current flowing through the element Z is going to be or let me just right now write it in simpler terms. So, the current flowing through let I be the current flowing through this then this current say is beta times I ok. So, now how it looks like is that let us say this was this were not there if this current source was not there then the impedance seen here is plainly Z it is just straightforward it is Z itself if you applied a voltage Vx and the current drawn I will be Vx by Z. But now this impedance I have added a current source in parallel to this impedance Z the current uh, controlled current source and the controlled current source the value of this current is actually I times beta times the current flowing through the impedance Z. So, now if you look at this source it looks like source is drawing a much larger current even though the impedance Z is drawing only I ok it is going to draw beta plus 1 into I. So, the impedance seen by the source will look like a much lower impedance for the same voltage much higher current is drawn. So, the impedance is lowered it is going to be Z by beta plus 1 ok. You can also see it intuitively. So, if for example, I have a current source of value G m a current source of value it is say G m times V x and I have applied a voltage V x and we discussed in the last class we can just simply replace it by a resistor of value 1 by G m. In a similar way your beta into I can be written as beta into V x upon Z. So, then the impedance this can replace this can be replaced by an impedance of value z by beta ok. So, now you actually have two impedances one is z the other value is z by beta both of them coming in parallel. So, the effective resistance is going to be lower than the smaller value. So, which is obviously it is going to be lower than z by beta. So, you can very easily see that if these two are in parallel you will get z by beta plus 1 ok. So, the same result we will actually see happening in a BJT as well and especially in a common collector configuration when we look at the emitter or the output terminal. So, now we are supposed to find the output resistance R out looking into the emitter. Now, I will actually add a finite source resistance. It, just to recall in a for a MOSFET the input impedance was infinity and it was completely independent low frequency input impedance was infinity and it was completely independent of what you connected at the load. But for a BJT it was pretty complicated and it had a very interesting relationship with the load resistance that is what we discussed in the last class. Now, we will look at the output resistance as you look at the as you look into the emitter terminal and we will see what effect or what does this source resistance RS have on the output resistance. Okay. Now, you should recall that there is a finite base current flowing in the um, in the base. So, you cannot ignore R s ok. So, now uh, if you as I said when you apply a positive voltage at the emitter compared to the base. So, for small signal analysis I said you can just reverse the polarity of all the currents. So, base current will flow in this direction everything will flow in the opposite direction you can just reverse the polarity ok because emitter is at a higher potential compared to base. So, you can reverse the currents current polarities and you can do the analysis ok. So, now uh, if I quickly draw the small signal model again I will for this small signal model I will resort to I'll, or we can do it either ways first we will go for a normal RE model as I said always go for a RE model or a T model. So, now I have said that you can just reverse the direction of currents because you are applying input at this point you are applying V x here this is R e and this current is I b this is there is a resistance R s here and the current here is I b and this is ground and there is a current flowing towards the collector the value of the current is beta times I b 
Now, if you look at this part of the circuit, so which is this part of the circuit, this is very similar to the impedance problem we discussed here. You know, we have an impedance Z and a current beta times IB flowing in the same direction. So just look at this. I'll just draw it differently. So you have RE and so you will you have a resistance RE here and then RS with respect to ground and they have a current IB flowing here and a control current source of value beta times IB flowing here. Now if you look at this part, when I look at this part, the impedance seen here, this I can club together and write it as simply Rs by beta, beta plus 1 in fact, because this is Rs and this is uh, beta, okay. So I can club these two together and then write it as Rs by beta plus 1. So we just discussed how this happens, okay. Uh, just a few moments ago, this is a resistance Re, I can just short these two nodes and connect them to a common ground. Then you have, you have a resistance of value Rs and a controlled current source, you can replace that by you know Rs by beta and the parallel equivalent will be Rs, plus, Rs by beta plus 1. That comes in series with Re, this is ground again. So the resistance seen here in the emitter is going to be small Re plus Rs by beta plus 1. You can also write small Re as R pi by beta plus 1, so then the result will become Rn will become Ri r pi plus rs by beta plus okay now i forgot to mention here so all this analysis we are doing assuming lambda equal to zero or r naught is infinity for the first case again i follow i'm following a similar approach as we did for uh, the gain and the input resistance so this is your input resistance of a common collector configuration again i have used an re model or a t model if i use a pi model so this will be r pi and Rs will come in series with it and base this is grounded and we'll be having a current. So this is your emitter terminal. I'm looking at the emitter right now to find the impedance. As I said, I've applied a positive voltage Vx here. So you can reverse the direction of currents. So you'll have a current IB flowing here and you'll have a current beta times IB flowing here and this is ground. Now if you look at this, I can club Rs and Rpi together and call it as Rpi plus Rs. Now Rpi and Rs are in series. Okay, so this is ground. And then you have a current of value beta times IB flowing here. So this I'll short it. This is the emitter. I'm looking at the emitter here. Now, if you can see, this is R pi plus RS in the looking in resistance. You have a current control current source in parallel with it. So there will be more current drawn, which, which, which means the impedance will be less. So it will be R pi. So this current is IB here. The same current multiplied current is going to flow through this part. So the impedance is going to be R pi plus Rs by beta plus 1. Okay, that's your input resistance as, okay, input resistance, resistance of a common collector configuration. Sorry, this is output resistance. If you recall the result for a MOSFET, it was completely independent. I'll write this result R pi by beta plus 1 is small re plus Rs by beta plus 1. This result can be written as Re is nothing but alpha by Gm plus Rs by beta plus 1. If you recall the result for a MOSFET, it was just 1 by Gm approximately. Parallel R0, if I ignore, I mean, anyways, in this analysis, I've assumed R0 is infinity. If you assume R0 is infinity, it was just 1 by Gm. Okay. R0 is infinity and Rs equal to 0. And it was completely independent of what you, whatever you connected at the gate terminal. When Rs, it was completely independent of Rs. But when you look at a common collector configuration, especially its BJT counterpart, which is common collector for a common drain, the impedance actually even depends upon RS. The resistance, low frequency input impedance or the resistance depends upon the value of RS as well. So now if I plot this as a function of RS, the output resistance as a function of RS, uh, if you look at this equation, it starts at RE, which is alpha by GM, and eventually goes to infinity as your RS increases from zero to infinity. So this is R out as a function of Rs. As you increase Rs, it just linearly increases and eventually goes up to infinity. Now, I'll just include R0 in the model. Now, uh, as I said, uh, once you add R0, it's a pretty, pretty trivial model. Okay, so your pro problem to solve. So R0 just directly comes in. If you look at this here, you're supposed to find R out here. So whatever resistance was there previously, it will come in parallel with R0. 
so i can just uh, i can simply model this uh, r not separately as a resistor with respect to ground it's a resistor r not comes in ground with i mean with respect to ground there is it's it's between the emitter and ground and there is a res the remaining bjt circuit is here we just calculated the impedance for this which was actually rs plus small r e oh sorry rs plus r pi upon beta plus 1 this whole thing will come in parallel with r not so this will be your r out in the presence of finite r not when lambda is not equal to 0 now when i try and plot the input impedance it's going to start from r pi by beta okay and eventually it's going to go to r not so it will slowly increase okay this is in fact i'll write it as uh, 1 by gm alpha by gm this is r pi by beta this is nothing but re at low frequency when rs is 0 it's going to be re which is rs by beta plus 1 r pi by beta plus 1 this is actually beta plus 1 here or alpha by gm and eventually the final value it's going to reach gm or not uh, sorry it's going to reach r not now if you compare these two values it it had gone from 1 by gm almost approximately if alpha is close to 1 i'll call it 1 by gm to r not so almost the gain at low frequencies at, at values of for small values of rs the impedance at small values of rs is intrinsic gain time smaller than the maximum value the maximum value is going to be r not so that again you can see when you are when your rs is infinity your base terminal is open collector here is grounded if base terminal is open then the base current has to be zero then the collector current has to be zero so emitter current is also zero the only current that will flow is the current that flows through r not so if i apply a voltage vx here this current will flow through the ground the collector current that is the current through the device will be zero okay the emitter current will also be zero uh, again i am separating out r not here so the, there will be a component of current through r not which is because of base width modulation so r not will be your limiting output resistance value so r out max if r not is infinity it's going to be infinity if you make your base resistance infinity but with a finite r not your r out max is going to be r not in a common collector configuration and the minimum value is going to be 1 by gm or alpha by gm so if you see here it's almost intrinsic gain time smaller so you take the minimum value alpha by gm multiply it by or i'll write it as 1 by gm instead instead of alpha by gm i'll write it as 1 by gm multiply it with gm r not that's that's what i'm calling as intrinsic gain then this will be equal to r not so it's almost intrinsic gain times larger so if you recall from the previous lecture your uh, input resistance was also r pi to beta times r pi r not or in fact at low values of rs it was r pi when r pi rs was rl was infinity we got a value of beta times r not or you know a not times r pi so that's where this uh, significance of the intrinsic gains co intrinsic gain comes here so the output resistance increases by intrinsic gain times so that's it about the output impedance analysis of a common collector configuration in the next lecture i'll just wind up the common collector discussion on common collector i think with this more or less we have finished uh, simple single stage amplifiers you know we haven't considered the cases of emitter degeneration and all that i'll discuss that in the coming lectures emitter or source degeneration in the coming lectures